She's one of the best investigators I have. But? She's different. Uh, in what way? In every way. My casting rules are simple. I try to find the person that I feel like I can turn the character over to. You know, you're looking for somebody to sort of hang a character on, you know, that, that you can kind of see them in a, and, and have, you, if you were to pre-imagine the movie, you can see them in it. You will be investigating thieves, misers, bullies, the most detestable collection of people that you will ever meet. My family. When we were screen testing, I was already sort of, you know, reading things and, and doing research on it. And then when I got the part, I was really kind of thrown into it quite fast. I was in Stockholm five days later. And, um, you know, there was a lot of physical work we had to do. I the motorcycle training and I did skateboarding and kickboxing. And, and then, you know, just from reading the books and the conversations with David, there's just, there was a lot, a lot that went into it. Something wrong with the report? Anything you chose not to disclose. He's clean, in my opinion. He's honest. Our credibility isn't dead yet. Mine is. As you read the book, that she evolves from being um, a secondary character into a very primary role. And I think it was through the creation of her that you sort of found what the voice was and the fact that she fights for them. I think she fights for her own voice. You failed to adapt to four foster homes. Were arrested twice for intoxication, twice for assault. How many partners have you had in the last month? And how many of those were men? I should have control of my money. And you will, once you learn to be sociable. Working with Fincher is not really working on a Hollywood production because he uses all his resources to get time to get everything right. He, there's nothing uh, especially fancy about it, no big trailers or anything. It's just about getting time to do the work right. Uh, so it feels like working on an independent film that goes on forever. Going, Elizabeth? I want you to help me catch a killer of women. I've got absolutely no idea how they're connected to the death of a 16-year-old girl. Don't you need to look over these? I got it. The core of the movie, the thing that interested me was, you know, a middle-aged man and, you know, a girl who's been ostensibly emotionally stunted at 13. I, I thought this I, it was such an unusual pairing. And it, and it was in this, you know, for me, exotic place. You know, most people at some point in their life can relate to, you know, that feeling of being marginalized or held back by people in a position of power. And, you know, people want to see this person succeed because of that. People can just relate to that feeling and, and they want to see her, they want to see her succeed. When I met David, to start talking about this film, he said to me, you know, this is not gonna be fun. And I said, what, what do you mean, not fun? Because I, I only work if it's fun. Uh, and I said, well, I, I do 40 takes of each setup. And I went, that can be fun. <laughs> you have to make it fun. We have to make it fun. And I actually think it's fun. It's, it's uh, you, when you work with David, even if it's, this is, it was a very long shoot. It took us almost a year to do it, finally. But, but, but when you work constantly and you, and you feel that you're, you're actually trying to get further in the scene for each take, you're trying to, to reach out for more and you can, you can change the angle of attack on the scene and investigate it, then it's really interesting work. And uh, so it was fun. Soon you will know us all only too well, with my apologies.